Hello and welcome back. Okay, folks, it's time for part one of today's Try Your Hand Up project. Let's join versatile artist David Hyde as he shares his top tips for painting a winter wonderland. Thank you, Matthew. Today's painting is going to be a snow scene. Um, uh, uh, some trees and a couple of cottages in amongst the Alps. So um, we're going to leave uh, quite a lot of this area uh, as snow, and you would think, therefore, that you need only leave the white paper. Um, however, you, if you leave a white, too much white, it devalues it. So you have to focus the white where it's going to be the most important. And in this painting, the light's going to come in from the left. And so the only part of the painting or the paper that you can leave white is that area where the sun is shining on the snow. The rest must be darker. So with that in mind, with that sort of basic plan for this painting, uh, we can mix a, a big wash this time. I'm going to use the um, Cosmotop number 12 again, which is a squirrel brush um, for my, my big wash. And I'm going to mix it in this large plate here. I'm going to use some cobalt blue, get a nice big wash of this. Again, I could wet the paper and, um, and uh, those of you who prefer to do that, you could get nice sort of sky effects, but it'll take longer to dry. So I'm just going to paint this directly onto the uh, dry paper. I need a good bit of it, and um, you'll see why. I'm just going to tint that with a little, that was a, no, with a little magenta, just to take the blue, blue off it. Now I want this to be very light. See how watery it is? So I know it's going to be weak. Um, Yep, that's going to be very weak, so that's fine. Now this, that's the weakness I want it, something like that. Even that's probably a wee bit strong, so I'm just going to add some more water straight from my pot and bring that down again. The trees are going to be dark, so you can bring the sky quite safely down beyond the trees. Now that will make the snow in the distance cooler and slightly lower in uh, tonal value than the snow here in the sunlight. And so it'll make, the, it'll uh, keep the value of that white um, strong and make it important, and make it important because again, your eye is drawn to the lightest, lightest tones and the biggest contrasts. So, just going to bring this down through here, making sure it comes down through the trees. Now, I've got to be careful with that roof there because that is snow on the roof and that's going to be in sunlight. So I want that white. So you've just got to keep your mind focused a little bit. Um, now, these trees are against the light, but they are actually going to be silver birches. But against the sky, they don't need to be white up there, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of a, a break between the squares of blue by leaving that white for the moment. And just bring that down again through here. And finally, oops, this one. I'm just having to control this a little bit with water as I go because I've mixed this wash a little bit too heavy. Um, I know it'll dry a little lighter, but even so, I don't want it too dark. It's no, oh no, it's not safely behind the trees yet. There it is, safely behind those mid-distant trees, or those far distant trees, I should say. And then I can just lift off any of those little beads of paint before they cause a, a problem. Now, immediately, if you take that line there, which is a slope up, the light, sunlight isn't going to be on that, so I can leave that, I can leave that little bit white. Now, the main interest of this is the buildings here. It's where the main contrast is going to be. So therefore, your main light needs to be there. So I want to leave white snow around where this building is, around through this area here, so it draws your eye in. So I'm going to darken 
with this same wash, I don't mind it being so a little darker now, is take this wash of uh, cobalt and magenta, just back to the house there, because this slope is away from the um, away from the sun, and that's that little slope started. Okay, now I'm going to keep out of this white area because that's where I want the uh, brightest part of this to be. I'm going to put a little bit of snow back there, and the building itself will cast a shadow, so I can put a little bit of uh, a shade there. But I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave that at the moment white, just to see how that, just to see how that works. If it doesn't work later on, I can always just darken it. So, I'm going to imagine there's some trees outside here, and I'm going to bring a little bit of shadow across from those trees so that it focuses that little bit of light around the building. The snow is deep here, or there's a little bank, so again, there will be no white on this bank, although it doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of uh, white paper, you know, where your brush is missed or skipped along the texture, because that will work okay. But I don't want any big white areas there, because I want to create this little lead in. And I'm going to brush my snow quite broadly, thinking it's, you know, if you imagine traveling along a road, take your brush mark along the road towards the bend. Uh, but what I want to do is get rid of all this white down here. I don't know whether you can see yet with just this bit done, but it is focusing the light around there. I've got this nice uh, tree here, which will cast a, a real good shadow back there. I might allow a little light this side of it, but artistically, I don't want sunlight on here, so I might bring a little shadow across from the far side and use that as an excuse to tone that down. The important thing for the composition and for the balance of light is you think about it and you paint accordingly. Don't be put off by the subject matter itself. Okay. Now, hopefully, shouldn't really do this, but the sky is dry enough to go over again. But normally you would um, leave that, let it dry. Okay, watch Bargain Hunt or something like that. It gives it plenty of time then to dry. And I'm not going to use a, a, a deeper colour. I've put a little bit of cobalt, more cobalt blue in that, which has probably strengthened it a little bit. Uh, probably a bit too much. No, I think that'll be all right. And I'm going to go back to the sky now and get the mount of the snow on the mountains to work, which means all I have to do now is just darken the sky. And when you darken the sky, your eye is going to be focused again down, uh, down below it, because your eye is drawn to the light. So with all that light, your eye doesn't know where to look. So you can start to just bring down the tone of the sky to the mountains. You can leave little bits, uh, you know, it'll suggest cloud and things, that's fine. But where you are right down the, where you meet the edges of these um, highlands, you want to make sure you have a nice dark outline there so that it defines the shape of the distant mountains. And I'm just going to wash a little water in that while that's wet, just to soften all that and create that little bit of a little bit of a cloud effect in that sky there behind the trees. Now we can put the mountains themselves now. We'll need a little bit of shape. Just pick those beads up before they muck the thing up. And I'm going to use finally this colour again. The light's coming from here. So I want a little bit of shape on the mountain. Use your brush, um, use it randomly and loosely, and it will suggest shadows on the mountains. You take it down to that one, which is, of course, light there, and you start this one. Again, I'm leaving that little bit of light so it stands away from the sky. Bring our mountain detail down, and uh, so on. You can do the same through here and just bring that tone down to that roof, which will darken the mountain 
behind, uh, which will make the white appear brighter. And of course that little bit of white going up there will also appear brighter. And then the basic snow um, is painted. At least the background is painted and the underpainting for the foreground is also done, but we'll need a little bit more contrast to bring that foreground forward. Okay, fine. So we'll let that dry. If you'll uh, join me later, then we'll bring this again to, uh, to a conclusion. Thanks, David. Fantastic blend of tones and cool contrasts. Perfect for painting a dazzling winter wonderland. We'll take a quick break to give that time to dry, but join us in part three when David will add the final finishing touches to conclude today's Try Your Hand Up project. See you soon.